Well, hello everyone. Long time no see, relatively speaking. As I said in one of my Gina videos, I think it's time to catch up with the flagpole lady. You know who I mean, the lady who thinks the sun is fake because it looks real big in weather cams, and sometimes it shows up as a black spot because it's too bright for the camera to handle, and the camera isn't designed to handle it properly. And it's the final days and Jesus is coming back soon because she saw a bunch of lens flares in the same weather cams, and she thinks they're rotating planet X's, and for some reason that means we're in the final days described in the book of Revelation. You know, that lady. Somehow she's still going, she's still posting reasonably often. Which is weird, because it was supposed to be the final days years ago when she started. If the term is really defined that broadly, I think it could use some tightening up. So let's see what she's up to, let's see if she's learned anything since my last video about her in... God, I think it was 2019. What is happening? I keep blinking and another month's gone. Help me, Paris Tosin! Save me with your timeline science! I'll eat the microwave steak, I will! Just help me! Please feel free to share, copy, or reuse any parts of any of my videos. Why, thank you. I mean, I don't actually need permission because of the law, but it's always nice to have confirmation there won't be any unnecessary hassles. Today we are going to see several different FAA weather cameras showing the sun rising up as a small disk or a tiny dot. A tiny dot? Well, that is strange. I mean, normally the sun is 32 arc minutes, which is about 1 300th of the human horizontal field of view. Which, I mean, is not that small. I wouldn't call it tiny. I wouldn't even call it minute. I'd call it about 32 minutes. All of the sunrises you are seeing here, check out precisely with the sunrise charts for this area. I am absolutely shocked. They predicted where the sun was going to rise? How is this possible? Be they prophets? Alright, hold on, that's the sun. It's behind the clouds, so there's no glare. I don't know what the field of view of that camera is, but regardless, the size of the sun there isn't exactly blowing me away. It certainly doesn't look wildly abnormal. Anyone who's looked at the sun with these solar filter glasses that you use for eclipses will know what I'm talking about. Which, if you're gonna dedicate large parts of your YouTube channel to complaining that the sun's the wrong size, is probably a good investment. You can get these things for a few bucks all over the place. But of course, that would require you to actually, you know, care at all that you know what you're talking about. And anyone can perform this same check using the date and timestamp on the images as well as the location. And then you can either do an internet search uh, for sunrise times or you can go to timeanddate.com, which is what I did, and just enter in the time and the date and you will see exactly where the sun is supposed to be rising up and when and what direction it's heading. I just left that in because it's amazing to hear one of these channels actually providing instructions on how to accurately check and verify information. But of course it's very convenient what those instructions are given for, isn't it? Please, go check that this is the right time for the sun to rise. But don't go check the size of the sun. Don't go look at the sun with eclipse glasses. Don't pick up your camera and point it at the sun and play with the exposure settings and see how much difference it makes. None of that. No. Because really, we can take it for granted that the sun is weird. That in fact this isn't the real sun. If there ever was such a thing. We already know all about that, we don't have to check that. Even though it's amazingly easy and the scientists of 3,000 years ago would be rolling in their graves if they learned how lazy you are. Just check the sunrise times to see that this imposter sun was in the place the real sun was actually supposed to be. Of course, simple logic tells all of us. Oh boy. I don't know what comes after this, but I guarantee it's going to be bad. Of course, simple logic tells all of us that we cannot possibly be looking at the real sun in these images. Yep, I was right. If there's one thing you should be afraid of in these videos, it's the phrase, simple logic tells us. But okay, the final days. I'll bite. What's the simple logic that leads you to the conclusion, therefore this sun is not real? The real sun is much, much larger than these tiny sun images we're seeing here. Okay. Well, I guess we might as well check. I didn't exactly expect to be doing another airport this time around, but it seems pretty much inescapable with these videos. So here is the airport we're looking at. It's the airport of Inukjuat, Quebec. 
And I want to say right off the bat, Google is made of crazy people because they sent a car to this airport to get the street view. And I would have expected them to go to the airport and go, okay, there's the airport. And then just keep going on the road past the airport. But they turned into the airport and drove all the way through it on the public road, all the way to the end, and then turned around and went back. So I have an awful lot of information here at my disposal. I admit it, I'm impressed. For all the negative things Google does and all the things we can complain about, and Street View might even be among them, it's still impressive. Possibly in a Death Star kind of way. But that's a matter of opinion. So here's the image that we're concerned with, and here from the FAA WeatherCam site is the clear view. They provide a clear view so that if it's nighttime or it's snowy or whatever, you can always see what you're actually looking at. A picture of the exact same thing but taken on a clear day. So what are the important features that we can see here? Well, of course we can see that antenna that it's pointing out to us at one-eighth of a statute mile. I'm not 100% sure that's accurate, you'll see why soon, but it could also be that the Google Earth ruler isn't accurate, so it doesn't matter too much. We'll get a decent idea of where the camera's at. There's a light pole, which fortunately I don't have to calculate much of anything about this time, and there's some wood poles a bit behind that, utility poles holding cables. And then there's this building over here with another light pole in front of it, and we're looking at that building at something of an angle, maybe like a 40, 45, somewhere around there. And between us and that building is a big wide open area, which I know because of the satellite imagery, and it looks like we're probably right beside that wide open area. I don't think it stops before us, or if it does, it stops pretty close to where we are. We've got to be pretty close to it, because in the west facing view you can see we're right next to it. In the east facing view we have a dirt road to the south of us leading to a wind tower in front of a ridge of rocks. And I think that ridge is this right here. Here's the road, here's the ridge. Now that road loops around and comes back, and we see where it comes back in the north facing view. So we're to the north of where the road goes to the wind tower and south of where it comes back. And of course we're south of the runway. Now judging by the satellite photos there's not an awful lot going on in that area. There are not a lot of permanent structures, but there is one. If we go to the historical imagery in Google Earth, we can see that this little square here exists obviously now in the 2019 imagery, and in 2016, and in 2013, so that thing's pretty permanent. It was there at least between 2013 and 2019. All the rest of the stuff is movable things. Barrels, sea cans, dumpsters, random nonsense. So what that actually is in the street view, it's hard to say. Our view in that direction is kind of blocked by some sea cans. It's possible, I guess, that the camera's on this red thing, but I think that's a little bit close, maybe. It's also possible that it's back here among all this stuff. Ultimately, though, it doesn't really matter. A weather cam is going to be a fairly permanent fixture, and considering where it looks like we're sitting at, I suspect that it is on that little permanent building. It doesn't even really matter if we can get a good view of that building from the ground, because what matters is that we have a general idea of where we're at, so that we can figure out the field of view. But just to verify we're in about the right place, let's check a couple other things. From the southwest facing view, we see that light pole that I mentioned, and we can actually see that in the street view as well, right along the fence line, and we can see that from the satellite imagery. This was not taken with the sun directly overhead, everything's casting a shadow, and we can see this long shadow, which is the light pole's shadow. We also should be looking at that big building at something like a 40-45 degree angle, relative to the line of its roof peak, I mean. And we are, roughly. And we should be able to see those antennas that we can see in the clear view. Here they are in the satellite view, you can see the shadows. These are pretty tall, so you can really see them. And our view of them from here is very clear. The one thing that's weird is that Google Earth's ruler says they're about a quarter mile away, while the clear view image says they're an eighth of a mile away. I don't know what to make of that. I mean, that clearly is them in the satellite imagery, so somebody's got this wrong. Who knows? It wouldn't be the first time that's happened. Not even the first time I've noticed in a video. Plus, from our vantage point, both of those utility poles should look like they're to the left of the light pole. Here are those poles in the satellite imagery, and yes, they look like they're to the left of this light pole. Also, these other two utility poles we can't see in the southwest facing image. So if we draw a line straight from where we think the camera is to those poles, the buildings should be in the way. And they are. So, getting to the point, all the angles seem about right, definitely what I would expect. If the camera is not exactly right there specifically, it's very close. But here's kind of a weird thing about that. As far as I can tell, everything I'm saying here checks out. But look at the directions indicated at the top. Those two antennae are directly south of us, apparently. And yet where I've placed the camera to get this view, that's not true at all. Here's how it looks from the satellite, and that's more like southeast, not directly south. So the question is, am I just being really arrogant here by assuming I know better than whoever put the labels on this picture? Well, 
Let's try putting the camera directly north of those antennae and see if it makes sense from anywhere along that line. See if we would see anything like what we're seeing. So we could put it just a little bit north, but then we're not going to see those buildings. And if we do see those buildings, we're going to see them from the road side. In other words, from the complete opposite side from what we actually see them. Okay, so maybe we move it way more north. Far enough that the buildings are in frame and they start to look like they're at about the right angle relative to the camera. And now we're pretty much on the other side of the runway. We're far, far distant from everything. We're nowhere even close to that big clear concrete area that we're clearly close to from the picture. Something's not quite right here. Yeah, I don't know, maybe somebody turned the camera, maybe they calibrated it slightly wrong. Maybe they just don't care that much at this airport. I'm sorry, but what we're actually seeing is way too far off what the labels say to make it make any sense to assume their absolute truth. They're clearly not. And by the way, there's something that I'm sure a lot of you are screaming at the screen by now. You might have been for several minutes, and I hope you enjoyed being kept in that state, ha ha ha. If I wanted to be an asshole right now, I could just say, hey look, it says it's from 180 to 240, so that's 60 degrees, plus there's like another half of the distance from 210 to 240 on either side, so tack on another 30 or so, you got 90 degrees here. 90 degree field of view, done! I could do that, but it's not as fun. And also, just like the directions, I have reason to believe that's not accurate either. So now let's figure out our field of view. So we'll draw some lines from the camera. First through the building that we see to the right side of the camera. And we don't see all that building, so it's going to go through somewhere in the middle of it, maybe a third of the way through it. Something like that doesn't have to be perfect. And unsurprisingly, this is a lot closer to 180 degrees that is south than the antennae are. Go figure! And then we'll put another line that runs past those antennae, but not directly past them because they're not right at the edge of the frame. So we'll give them a little breathing room. And what we're left with is something like a field of view of 60 degrees. Now that might seem very, very weird. Why would the field of view seem that far off compared with the labels? Well, there is an answer. Compare it with these images from the Drumheller weather cam we saw in a previous video, or with this image from the Edmonton airport, and you tell me. I'll give you a second. Right, the wide angle should be causing much more curvature in the image. It is at those other airports. But where's that curvature at our airport? There is a little bit, but it's very slight. Here are all the other cameras from our airport, and it's the same story every time. There may be a bit of a curve, but nothing even close to what we're seeing at Edmonton or Drumheller. And yet with Edmonton, the labels are the same. 180, 210, 240. So I'm thinking this is just an example of reusing the same direction labels without really worrying much about perfect precision. The lens is different, maybe it's a totally different camera. Because after all, for one thing this is not a major airport, and for another thing it's not like the pilots are going to get any more or less information about the weather based on how many degrees the labels say the image shows. They're probably going to look and see if it's rainy, or snowy, or foggy, or whatever, and then fly the damn plane. So all in all, kind of weird, I don't really blame them, but this is why we check. So now that we have a field of view, let's take an image with this really weirdly tiny sun, and check if it's weirdly tiny. Now, we have an image here that's 960 pixels across, and if the sun is something like 32 arc minutes, it should be around 1% of that, a little bit less than 1% maybe. But we're not going to be too picky about it because the sun's behind clouds, obviously, it has some glow around it. It makes it kind of unclear where the actual edge of it is. But okay, let's measure it, just take mainly the brightest part of it. Keep the part I measure as small as I can, because of course that gives the benefit to you, which just reinforces my point, and that's somewhere around 8 8 pixels, which, as expected, is just under 1%. So, based on the field of view we've established and the known angular diameter of the sun, which I'll let you measure for yourself in your own time, please be careful, simple logic tells us that everything is exactly as expected. Do better, the final days. It's not that goddamn hard, especially in relation to the supposed importance of it. Whoa, the sun keeps changing size! That's crazy! How could that possibly happen on a cloudy day? In a camera? I'm just- I- 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 uh, What? You are seeing a manufactured light that is capable of generating an enormous glare. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. I thought the problem now was that the sun is small. 
It was the other video where the problem was the sun is too big. Remember? Like, it's been a while, but it was something like the sun is so big that it's gonna burn up the Yeti at the airport, or something like that. The sun there was fake because it's big. In this video, the sun is supposed to be fake because it's small. Get your story straight. I mean, preferably you'd get it straight between videos, too. But come on, I'm not going to expect too much from you. That can cover a huge portion of the sky in just minutes or seconds. Nope, fake sun covers an itty bitty tiny piece of the sky. That's how it works. Simple logic tells us so. Very simple logic. This light generator is capable of engulfing any nearby celestial objects in glare. <gasps> the sun hides celestial objects with its glare? What? So hold on, are you telling me that when a star goes close to the sun, I can't see it anymore? Dear. God, it really is the end of days. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Save me, Lord. To prevent the public from being able to view them. Considering that just about every one of your videos is all about the different lens flares you saw and how you can see them just fine, the they don't do a very good job, do they? If you're gonna do some kind of gigantic, wacky, evil plan, at least don't make it so your main machine that you need for it is always on the fritz. I mean, these are gotta be the most pathetically incompetent they's I've ever heard of. If you guys want some help, call up Reptoid Headquarters. We'll be happy to help you. We've been doing this stuff for millennia. Pro bono. Just out of pity. This sometimes causes the manufactured light to appear as a formless heap of glare. Thus, the sun really isn't where you think it is. Ugh, you know, you're so close to getting it. There's glare. You understand that that means the sun might be smaller than the glare. That the sun itself, aside from the glare, might not be entirely visible for all the glare. It's staring you right in the face. Why the sun's too big? Why the sun's too small? You don't even have to reach out and grab it. It's sitting on the tip of your nose. And yet, somehow, you're content to keep living this way. You know where the running reptoid gag came from? I feel like a fucking space alien sometimes dealing with these people. Their way of thinking is so bizarre to me, it's like it comes from another planet. I have no idea how I've managed to deal with this stuff for... Pff, soon enough, ten years. And not gone crazy. How or if. It is often being eclipsed by objects in the sky, cloaked objects, planets, uh, stellar cores, whatever most of these things are. The sun? The sun is often being eclipsed by objects? Like clouds? Or poles? Yeah. I'm sorry if that's a problem for you. Maybe you should move to Mount Everest. Whenever cloud cover is just right for blocking out the circular glare, all we see is the small light generator. Oh, you're so close! It's so frustrating! When the clouds are right to block out the glare, all you see is... The true angular diameter of the sun, without glare. That's what you see. Oh, it hurts my head. The stupid, it tastes so fucking good. But it gives me such bad headaches. You know what, I need a very short break, because this is painful. Let's randomly take 30 seconds and listen to my theme song. Oh yeah, that makes me feel better. Been a while since I used that, huh? Fintronaut. It's awesome. You know what, let's do the black metal version too, what the hell? Been a while for that, too. Serpent Wraith. I don't even know if that guy's on YouTube still. Ah, the good old days. Anyway, I got my energy back. Let's keep going. Most of these images are now removed from these cameras before the public has access to them. I only get what they miss. 
What are you talking about? Those FAA cameras have like six hours worth of images available all the time. If one or two are missing sometimes, it's just because sometimes things aren't perfect. Sorry. Technology spooky. All of the technology you are seeing here is Fallen Angel technology. The Fallen Angels set up the weather cams for us? And that was nice of them. Although I guess the real question is, how did these particular angels fall? If they fell because they took off in a storm, maybe there's a little bit of their own self-interest at work here. They've been here much longer than we have, and they are much smarter than we are. Anything's much smarter than you are. All of these oddities we are seeing in our skies are signs that we are living in the very last days. Yeah, and you've been saying that since you started running your channel, your previous channel, I mean, Universal News Media, where you did the exact same thing, since January 2018. We've been in the very last days for over three years, and it seems like any time you go to any weather cam anywhere, you see the sun being super weird and artificial, or Planet X's all over the place. And yet in those same three years, in real life, with your real eyes, it all seems completely normal. Maybe not your real eyes, because I don't think you've ever been outside, but with my real eyes, and I'm sure I have the testimonies of pretty much everyone watching this, and all the rest of the world who is not in some sort of uproar on social media about it, it's just your weird little group that seems to notice all these crazy happenings, and only in photos and videos. In other words, exactly where you would expect to see such things, because they're totally normal in photography. The point is, it all seems very underwhelming, and these very last days seem very not very last. We're all still here, we have been for years, and spoiler alert, we're going to be for a lot longer. I don't know how old you are, but I'm fairly comfortable asserting that you will die of old age before the rapture. I said before that time is my enemy, but in this case time is my best ally, because it will prove me right. Jesus discusses the last days in Luke chapter 21 verse 25, when he tells us that we will see signs in the sky when the end of the age is near. Well then shouldn't you be looking at the sky, not sitting inside looking at weather cams? That's not the sky. The cloaked celestial objects we saw just a minute ago are part of an inbound planetary system that will be bringing God's wrath upon a world of sin and abomination. Ooh, what are the random optical effects going to do to the world of abomination? Flicker at it? The good news about all this is that faithful believers in Christ are not appointed to God's wrath, his judgments, or plagues, as stated repeatedly throughout the Bible. Just imagine actually being able to be suckered in by this. Like you're 45 years old, you've just gone about your life the whole time, non-religious, and then all of a sudden you see this weather cam footage, and you go, oh my god, it's the final days, where's my Bible, I have to convert to Jesus right now! After everything else, this is the thing that did it. This. I bet there's somebody out there. And if you're watching, shame on you. Ugh. It's very rare to be able to find these kinds of images in the FAA cameras nowadays. What, images where the sun is hidden behind some kind of a post? Well, yeah, that's not going to be that common. I mean, the pictures are taken every 10 minutes, and some of those poles, they're definitely enough to eclipse the sun, but sometimes it cuts it pretty tight. And here's how much the sun can move in 10 minutes. Each click is 10 minutes. It's not insignificant. And then, of course, the sun's got to be following a path that'll actually make it cross the pole in the first place. Yeah, there's quite a number of variables here. It's not going to be the most common kind of picture. What were you expecting? That's not a nowadays thing. It's just a thing. Because there nearly always removed before the public can view them. <sighs> sure, or it's a the-they conspiracy to cover up the existence of poles that can hide the sun, because that's an important use of their time. But I did manage to get very lucky a few times and obtain several different videos showing how really small objects can completely block the circular glare produced by the small light generator. I'm not covering these. I've already done this. More than once. There was the fake sun in the flagpole, there was the fake sun in the looming lens flare planets. It's the same thing over and over and over with this person. I thought the sun was super giant, but now it's hiding behind a thing. Oh, that's right, she wasn't always concerned the sun was too big. In this case, it was that it was too small. She really needs to make up her mind. Every effort is made to prevent the public from seeing these. Really? 
because your videos are still up. My videos about your videos are still up. If you want to, send me a zip file with all the pictures you think are so great, and I'll create a channel on my Discord and blast them out to everyone in there if you want. Nobody cares. This is so mind-numbingly stupid. As I mentioned before, I only get what they miss. Untold trillions have been spent on the technology to hide the approaching planetary system. Oh really? You're familiar with the budget, are you? How do you know that? What's your role in all this? Are you controlled opposition? Is this a false flagpole operation? Why are you trying to deceive us? The reason for the deception is because the enemies of Christ do not want you to know how close to the end we are, nor do they want you to turn over your life to Jesus while you still have time. Oh, and so you have to deceive people to make them do that. Because not enough people are converting. You gotta find some way to scare them. Is it working? Please tell me that's not working. It's probably working. Information is at the end of this video instructing you on how to accept Christ into your life. Yeah, I think we're gonna skip the Bible stuff. I don't know, of all these really far out conspiracy type channels, I think this one is one of the more annoying ones to me because it's so blatantly trying to use fear to get really gullible people to join the religion. And that's the only point. I halfway doubt this lady even believes a single word that she says, except the Jesus bits. Unfortunately, lying for Jesus is not new and it's probably never gonna go away. Isn't that nice? Thank you for watching. Please give the video a like and click subscribe. Enormous thanks to everyone who supports the channel through any platform. Patreon, Subscribestar, PayPal, YouTube members, anything else. If you want to get videos a day early and make sure that you're not just seeing them at the whim of some algorithm, consider signing up to my email list at list.logic.com. See you next time, everybody.